Hi, my name is Akiva Goldman. I'm the director and founder of Goldman & Associates. Our firm has a primary focus on family law issues here in Michigan. And today we're going to continue our video series designed to educate and inform the public. So please subscribe to our channel. How does one protect personal property in a divorce? Well, you know, it's a very interesting thing because personal property, which means stuff, is usually given short shrift in the divorce. The judgment of divorce will typically award the money to this one, the house to that one, and the personal property to be divided between the parties. If they can't agree, sometimes it's an arbitrator, but very rarely will the court specify an item. This one will go here, this set of dishes goes to that, this TV goes out. Court doesn't usually do that. It focuses on the big ticket items. It takes more of a global approach. However, there are times when personal property becomes very important to one person. Like for example, uh, you know, somebody's parent passes away and there's an urn with ashes, you know, the remains. There's an item of sentimental value that was passed down. Perhaps there's, I don't know, let me give you an example. Grandmother passed down candlesticks to the bride that she had as a wedding present. Well, when they get divorced, somebody going to try and take that from her or oh, I'm sure some spiteful person would but the court will probably regard a personal heirloom as a non-marital asset even if it's of significant value uh, the court may still give the asset to the person who it from whose family it came and maybe there'll be a reckoning a reckoning somewhere else with respect to other assets but generally speaking the court is going to try to protect those heirlooms therefore if somebody has something that is of great sentimental value it's really important to itemize those things right in the beginning. Let your lawyer, let the court know that these things have to be protected. Especially if you're out of the marital home, you better have a video inventory of those things because that urn has a funny way of disappearing. Those candlesticks, you know, may all, all of a sudden, you know, nowhere to be found. It could be letters. It could be anything at all. It could be a, a book that you were given that has an inscription inside something that is a great personal, familial, or sentimental value. And if you let the court know in advance, the court can make sure that the item is preserved. The court can even require that the item be removed from the marital home and stored in the office of one of the attorneys until further order of the court. Here at Goldman and Associates, we have a lock, a cabinet under lock and key of all sorts of things that courts ask me to hold in trust until such time as things are resolved. It could be photographs, it could be a certain writings, it could be passports, it could be just anything at all. And we keep all sorts of stuff under lock and key, perhaps a, a piece of jewelry that's sentimental. And this is routinely done by the court, but the court doesn't know to do it unless you ask. So therefore, if you've got something very important in the way of personal property, very important to you, that you're afraid the other side will just throw out because they know it's important to you. And maybe they'll do it out of spite. If you're worried about that, let your lawyer know so he or she can get their hands around as soon as possible. And that should be stored under lock and key somewhere until the court resolves the issues in the divorce. If you have any questions about that, reach out. We'll be glad to help you out.